Good evening, prideful party people, and welcome to June, which, in case you're not already aware of, happens to be Pride Month for those who fall under the very large blanket category of LGBTQIA+, which, in my humble opinion, merely means that when the phrase, love is love, is brought up in conversation, you're like, yeah, you're right about that, with no further unnecessary strings attached in that case. I hope y'all are having a wonderful day so far. It is now June 1st, which means the month of the pridefulness is finally upon us. And the fact that I have brought it up is indicative of a couple of different things. But one of the main things is that's the theme of today's cocktail. I was thinking to myself pretty much throughout the week, what the heck this was going to be tonight, as I often do plan things completely in the last minute. And a thought occurred to me of like, oh, you know what? It's it's that it's that it's that time of the year again. So how do you kind of put that into a cocktail? And the first thing that came to my mind was like, oh, you just kind of have things with multiple colors on top of each other. And like, yeah, that's true. But like, I don't think it tastes very good. I for one have never had a complex, uh, a complex layered drink with a lot of colors on it that actually tastes good for the most part. Anything more than like three to four four i think three to four colors is like kind of beyond any sort of like taste that i expect to get from this thing um other than that it's mostly just for presentation so it got me thinking i was like what what is multicolored prideful perhaps tastes really really good and so i had the idea of cereals out there it's not necessarily my idea you've seen before people kind of throwing cereal and whatnot into things that cereal doesn't necessarily go into like alcohol for instance i was like yeah but like how do we make this like really, really splendiferous? I think I'm using that term correctly. Splendiferous as in like really, really cool or uh, really, really awesome. Kind of, I'm of woo in a way. And so I was like, well, instead of taking a single box of cereal or a particular cereal type, not just two, let's just go to Target and find every single prideful looking cereal. Oh, this is the third one. And see if we can put that into a cocktail uh, in some way, shape, or form. And as I was doing a little bit of research, as it turns out, there's a whole broad category of things, of cocktails on the internet, called milk punches. And although there's many, many different types of milk punches out there, the one that I always bring to mind when I think of a milk punch was this really cool, like, chemical experiment thing that I saw called, like, a, it was like a purified milk punch, I think. And the purified milk punch apparently uses some weird cocktail chemistry stuff to remove all of like the undesirable molecules from like actual milk that came from a cow although i think it's the an enzyme related thing or otherwise i don't remember what the chemical process is but essentially you make the milk clear by removing all of the molecules in the inside of it that make it like opaque in a way i don't have enough knowledge on that that's not what we're doing today instead we're going to do a sort of milky punch which with as much as much cereal as I could possibly put into it in the hopes that this, the milk that I use absorbs and infuses the fellow the, the fellow ingrediential flavors of whatever cereals I put into it, which happens to be Fruit Loops, Tricks, and Fruity Pebbles, which I, from what I recall, I've eaten Fruit Loops recently, tastes all right. I've had Fruity Pebbles less recently. Uh, that also tastes pretty good. And Tricks I literally have not had in years, but as it turns out, they had the Tricks at the store where like, all of them are, all of them are not just like brown pieces of starch or whatever. Uh, it's got six fruity shapes and it's multicolored. So I figured that's what we were gonna do. Um, also, I just felt it very comical as I whizzed past all of the different sections in Target to go to the cereal section to which I was like, yep, that's colorful. And yep, that's colorful. And ooh, that's pretty colorful too. And I kind of held these three boxes and walked along normally up to the counter and be like, I, I'm gonna buy all these cereals and I'm most definitely going to eat them all or at the very least use them for a purpose that they weren't necessarily made for. Although to be fair, if you were, um, if you're, you're a similar person to I, I definitely once upon a time would use the type of cereal to change the properties of the milk with which it's set in. Uh, and though I don't have a lot of cereal and milk nowadays, I usually do my toast and peanut butter in the morning. This, this may start that chain off again. So to create a milk punch, or at least the basic recipe that I found online, usually you're gonna take some sort of spirit. I think most often it's a grain spirit like bourbon or something like that. You're gonna mix it with milk, some simple syrup, and then you're gonna add a little bit of vanilla extract in there. You're gonna whiz that thing up till it gets frothy and that's your milk punch. Yo, welcome to the party, Raven Dramatic. I'm gonna put on a party hat for you. I hope that's cool. It is cool. It's awesome and it's wonderful. And thank you for being here today. 
Um, what was I saying? Milk punches. That's a thing that happens. Um, but yeah, so I decided to take that recipe and kind of scale things up a little bit. When I think of a punch, I think of a punch bowl. When I think of a punch bowl, I think of something that's large that you can serve out of at a party. So, uh, when I was at the Philly AIDS thrift store the other day, <laughs> well, as it turns out, <laughs> I found a really, really big container, a giant margarita glass, and I think this is the perfect container to be mixing a prideful, voluminous, I just made that word up, punch bowl. Hello, Raven Dramatic. Is it bad to skip a meal? Asking for a friend. I don't think it's bad to skip a meal, so long as you are keeping healthy within your means. If you're skipping meals, uh, to skip a meal? No, I don't think that's very bad. To skip meals often, as in to make it a sort of habit, a bad habit for some people, then yes. It may be a bad thing, although it may be indicative of a bigger problem. But as Dosney Coin would say, my lovely fiance who is studying PT, uh, she has a little more context on that, uh, of whether skipping a meal is bad or not. I have people, for a while, I skipped breakfast in the morning. I don't do that anymore because I fell in love with peanut butter toast. Um, but like, it, was, it wasn't really in an attempt to fix my breakfast problem, although it kind of was. It's just because like, I get hungry in my, I get hungry when I get to work. And I don't want to feel hungry when I get to work, so I eat the breakfast in the morning to prevent that. It's a... It's a process, if you will. In any case, to start on this proliferous cocktail, I'm trying to figure out P words. I don't think proliferous is the right word to use there either. We're basically just gonna add a shiz ton of stuff to this bowl here. Uh, and the first step, I guess, is actually making the cereal because the whole point of the cereal milk punch is to let the cereal sit and make it do its magic on the milk that lays on the inside. And um, well, I can talk for a while, and there's three different cereals, so I think the infusion process begins basically now. So the first thing that we're going to add to our prideful punch bowl is some milk. If you are a fan of whole milk, that's awesome. Almond milk? Great. I, for one, am a fan of oat milk, which I'm so happy I was able to find Oatly at the store today. I like Oatly. I think it has the closest texture and taste to regular milk. I've used that in I've used it in various different recipes. If you're trying to find a milk alternative, if you if you're not trying to look for a milk alternative, you don't need to, honestly. If you're cool with the whole milk, then that's totally fine. Some people would argue against it, but like if it tastes good and it's not harming you, then that's totally fine. I, I vibe with it. Raven Dramatic always skips breakfast, but they skipped dinner tonight because, you know, mental health not doing so well. Well, perhaps as a way to kind of, because I know when I when I hear mental health not so well, I sometimes think that my internal reward system that determines when I'm feeling happy or sad sometimes gets a little bit odd and wonked off. And sometimes when I don't really feel like eating a particular thing, actually, come to think of it, I really wasn't really into dinner tonight. Nobody's fault but my own. But uh, I did have something that kicked off my reward system and I changed it up a little bit. Instead of the dinner that we were having tonight, uh, instead, I think my uh, fiance went out to the market today and brought back a pretzel from Auntie Anne's. And my goodness, although it's not really the dinner that I probably should have been having, I just wolfed down an entire pretzel before this stream started and I swear I couldn't be happier from a meal point of view. So if that's what does it for you, maybe, maybe it's a little bit of sugar, something that kicked the system off. Hopefully not too much chocolate. I didn't... <laughs> I guess a little slip there. I was gonna say candy, but I said chocolate instead because my mind is now on chocolate, but alas. Anna says to try to small snack and make sure you're able to take care of yourself. You deserve it, you do deserve it. No matter who you are in the world, you may think that you don't deserve it. I feel that way sometimes too, but I'm pretty sure it's a, confl a complex of mine. I do deserve it. I'm beautiful. You are beautiful. You deserve it. You deserve that entire original pretzel from Auntie Anne's. You do. Despite the fact that you may not feel it, you should and you shall if you so choose it for yourself. So, to start off some milk punch, take some milk if you got it. Doesn't matter what kind, could be could be whole milk, could be 2% milk, could be fat-free milk, could be lactose milk, could be soy milk, could be almond milk, could be coconut milk, whatever milk you damn well, please. It's whatever's most available around you. Um, and you're gonna pour, uh, let's see. I think I need to get my notes for this because I did a whole lot of math before this stream started. <clears throat> to create the prideful punch, um, with the measurements of cereal aside, which you can decide how much cereal you want to put in your milk bowl. Maybe you're all milk, little cereal kind of person. Maybe you're all cereal, barely in a milk kind of person like Anna is. That's no problem there. It's cool. But you're generally going to add, oh, I hope I did this out for, oh, one, hmm, four parts of milk to one part of bourbon with about two dashes per that ratio of vanilla extract. Uh, we're going with four parts. I measured this entire bowl out. It fits about, um, I think, was it eight cups? I think eight cups. It might have been six cups. I hope I did this math correctly. It's six cups. This bowl fits six cups. So I'm going to add 
per the ratio described earlier, four and a half cups of milk. In my case, it's oatly. It's oat milk. It's lovely. I think so, at least. Try a small, yeah, a small snack. I saw that. The pretzel was from the from Rittenhouse Square. I love. Wait, was it not? Was it not an Auntie Anne's pretzel? Because I swear it tasted like an Auntie Anne's pretzel. Um, so usually we measure in ounces and milliliters around here, but this is a giant freaking punch bowl, so the measurement that we're using is in cups. Please add to your passionately prideful punch bowl four and a half cups, or 36 ounces, or 1.06 liters, or one about 1,059 milliliters of milk. Whatever you got, just, just take it. Just take it and pour it in your glass. Uh, I need four and a half cups, so that's how I'm gonna measure it. I was told earlier to pour things from a high distance, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pour this from a very high distance and try not to make a mess. I'm shivering. Oh, I'm trembling because it's a very heavy cup of stuff. Two cups. Oh, that kind of got places. That's okay. I will be cleaning up a little bit of milk later. That's no problem. Any, any professional amateur bartender has a towel on standby to wipe up the mess. Also, my table is very wobbly. I just realized how much that might be a problem today, but... I added two cups already. Let's let's actually only let's just have one point of stasis. There we go. Look at that! Isn't that beautiful? Oh, that's so cool looking. Wow! Isn't he skillful? No, he's not skillful. He's just showing off. But alas, if you're showing off, you might have a lot of pride. If you got a lot of pride, this is the month for you. And even if you don't have a lot of pride, like it's kind of, in my opinion, it's a it's a month for everybody. It doesn't have to be like this whole pride thing with the rainbows and stuff. It can be whatever pride you want to. Maybe you had a kid. Like maybe that's something you're really prideful of. Did you achieve something today? Maybe you didn't achieve anything, but you're feeling okay today. I think that's something worth being prideful over. It really depends on your perspective. And I think perspective is more than half the battle in that case. No, the pretzel was made by an Amish stand and they were great. It was very sweet, rather salty. I loved it. It was... Oh, it was divine. Thank you so much, dearest, for providing that to me. All right, I'm gonna put this measuring cup away. I don't need it right now. Uh, the next thing I need is the cereal. The idea is to be able to infuse the cereal within the cereal bowl. And naturally, if you're having cereal, you gotta make sure that you have a, a spoon on standby. Otherwise, you don't get to enjoy it. I have a big old ladle. We'll use this. This is a secret tool that we'll have to use later. I promise. I promise. The first cereal I'm gonna start out with is Fruit Loops. Um, do I have any memories of Fruit Loops? Well. To be perfectly honest, when I think of Fruit Loops, actually Fruit Loops are, I think, Disney Queen's favorite cereal that I have currently in the house. When I think of Fruit Loops, it's definitely the, the cereal that's made its appearance most often in this apartment space. Um, it's great, and uh, it reminds me of a life. It reminds me of Lifesavers, which is a candy that I choked on many years ago in a doctor's office. Now, contrary to popular belief, Lifesavers are not named that way because they save anybody's lives. Quite the opposite. I almost died that day, but I was in a doctor's office. But the doctor actually didn't come to save me. So, like, I think it was my grandfather that saved me. Thanks, Grandpa Jimmy. I appreciate you. We're gonna add cereal. Um, however much cereal you want. Fruit. I got Fruit Loops. Let's let that go for a little bit. I'm putting a little bit of Fruit Loops in there. What do Fruit Loops taste like? Um, well, let's answer that question. Fruit Loops smell like. I don't exactly know how to describe it, but it smells like Fruit Loops. I, I don't know how else to describe what Fruit Loops smells like. They're colorful, they're they're tasty, and they taste like. Wow, who guessed it? They taste like sugar. I had no idea. Disney Queen says it's her favorite candy cereal. Sugar, sugar, sugar. It's sugar. You called it. You got it. Clairvoyant Disney Queen over here. It does taste like sugar. Um, what I'm gonna do is. I don't know what the best way to infuse milk in a cereal bowl is, but if I imagine, if you imagine for a moment that you are pouring yourself a bowl of cereal, you're enjoying a bowl of cereal, and over time, that bowl of cereal starts to transform in flavor. The milk begins to turn different colors. Memories of your past start welling up, and you feel a little bit of nostalgia. What is the action that you're doing? You're probably putting a spoon into the bowl, or stirring it around, wondering about the thoughts that got you here. I have a whisk. I'm gonna whisk it lightly. I'm not trying to froth anything just yet, but that's that's how I'm gonna do. Wow. Okay, the whisk was a bad idea. It's picking up Fruit Loops. Uh, that's that's okay. That's why. Get out of there. Get out of there. All right. Backup plan. It's okay. <laughs> I have an actual spoon. It is not meant for um, eating cereal unless you want just the cereal on the inside and not the milk because it has holes in it. Hello. In any case, um, we're gonna make this these Fruit Loops look. 
soaked in milk. I, I don't know how else to describe it. It looks like they are moist and white. Unless your milk is a different color, in which case, you know, that reminds me. If I had to pick a favorite type of milk, it would not be chocolate milk. It's strawberry milk. And specifically, strawberry milk that has been made strawberry because of Hershey strawberry syrup, which does not really taste like strawberries to me, but it tastes like my childhood. If I had to if I had to pick a flavor from my childhood, it would probably be strawberry milk. And actually, wait, I actually, I had something the other day that actually tasted like strawberry. Yo, taro, taro, the purple stuff that they can put in, in, in boba tea and whatnot. Taro, in my opinion, tastes like my childhood, AKA Hershey strawberry milk. Ooh, I love that. That was bringing up all sorts of nostalgia for me. This does not taste like that. This does not taste nor remind me of my childhood in a way reminiscent of strawberry milk. The next thing we're gonna put in there is tricks. I don't, I don't remember much about tricks from my childhood. I just be remember being like mildly disturbed by the mascot on the box. Like this, this tricks rabbit has gone through some transformation, and this is like this is like the version that I remember. They have this newer one now where there's significantly less shading. Which kind of think of it, the shading on this box makes it seem like the bowl itself is glowing an eerie glow, like the rabbit's about to tell you like a ghost story. Like there's a certain gradient going on there that I just. I don't like the implication of that, but on the bright side, I'm not here. I'm not here to criticize mascots. What I'm here to do is make myself a cocktail. Also, speaking of things that sound like anything, I just noticed my air conditioner is very loud, and I'm gonna take a silent moment just to see whether or not that's getting picked up on the microphone. Sometimes, sometimes getting picked up. If y'all can do me a small little favor, I can't really tell what things sound like right now. If the air conditioning is bothersome or it seems distracting, let me know. I appreciate feedback. And if it's not and y'all don't even notice and I'm just hearing things, then that's got good implications and bad implications. But I'm just going to choose to listen to the good implications for now. I'm not going to anything. Wow, this smells great. Wait a minute. Ooh. Oh, now I'm getting the memories of Trix from my life. Trix actually smells like, like fruit. It does not smell the same way. I'd say comparatively to Fruit Loops, Fruit Loops smell like they've been in a box and Trix cereal smells like they've been in a bag where the bag does not impart much of its own flavor. It just smells like it's supposed to be this way. Fruit Loops smell like there's something else going on in there that I should be concerned about. Maybe it's got to do with the toucan. Sam? Freak me out, dude. And 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 you, rabbit, whose name I don't know, enlarged to show detail. Giggity. I don't know what your name is, but you creep me out. I guess a little bit less in this case, but the whole what I described before with the whole lighting from the cereal bowl, that's that's a little much. I can't I just I absentmindedly <laughs> I absentmindedly put the tricks down, probably because of the visceral feelings I was feeling toward the bunny rabbit. Um, add your trick cereal. It's colorful. It's great. It's delightful. No, I'm gonna let you know right now. I am not eating all of this cereal. This is here for the infusing and we will add some tasteful amounts of cereal later as a garnish after the infusion of the milk is complete. Also, I can only imagine how much like mass this thing is gaining. I did not measure things out properly. I just made it so that hopefully I could fit six cups worth of ingredient in here. It's quite an interesting spectacle, to be honest. I gotta get a picture of this. This is actually quite beautiful. I don't, I, I don't know if this will make it to the, the Instagram or anything like that. But, uh, let's see. That's... I don't like the way that looks in this light. But you know what? It's colorful. It's, it's wonderful. And does it taste good? I describe what Trix smells like. What does Trix taste like? It's been soiled by the oat milk, so excuse me. Tastes sticky. It tastes like... There's a lot less substance going on in Trix cereal. I think there's a lot more air in it. And from that regard, the texture is almost sticky in a way. It feels like whatever sugar is in the Trix cereal is kind of sticking around in my mouth. And it's not, it's not entirely unwelcome, but like, but like it, I didn't feel the same way as I did about the Fruit Loops. So far, both cereals, I'm a very, I'm a very aftertaste aware kind of person. Like for the most part, if there's an aftertaste in something, that will stick with me and that will kind of determine whether or not I actually like what it is that I'm that I'm eating at that moment or drinking and they've got aftertastes and it's probably because of the amount of sugar that they put in this stuff but I don't like that aftertaste I don't like the aftertaste of trick cereal I'm slightly okay with the aftertaste of fruit loops um what's the next one the next one is fruity pebbles I feel like this is my, what is going on on the back of this box they are putting they're making fruity snoutosaurus chunks 
on the back of the box and it's on top of a banana, I guess? I think they're putting Fruity Pebbles on top of a banana. That's, that's what it looks like to me. I don't, I do not plan on indulging in that same activity. I have no bananas, nor do I have a means to make it sticky enough to put the things on there. How do we, Peter, try this. Fruity snorted Snoutosaurus trunks. Peel, then cut a banana in half. Crosswise, insert a craft stick into the bottom of each half. Dip the bananas in vanilla yogurt and roll in Fruity Pebbles. Freeze for an hour, enjoy. Actually doesn't sound that bad. I, I could I could get behind that. I'm not, not a huge fan of yogurt. I like yogurt, but I'm like, I'm not the biggest, biggest fan of yogurt. When I was home the other week, I had some Greek yogurt. It advertises itself as being strawberry-like. Mildly strawberry, I'd say. Oh my god, this has something else going on. Whoa. The Fruity Pebbles smells like the fruity intensity of the Trick cereal. However, it smells like there's something else in there entirely. Like, it doesn't smell like the box, like the Fruit Loops do. It doesn't smell like pure, unadulterated sweet fruit, like the Trix does. It also smells like... something else. I don't know what that something else is. Butter, maybe? Maybe buttery? It smells like it could very well already have some sort of frosting. Frosting! I'm getting frosting vibes. It kind of smells like... There's almost a little bit of frosting in there, like frosting from a cake. That is... Wow. I did not think that I would be sticking my nose in cereal boxes tonight. But here we are, and I think we're enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Um, yeah, how does it taste? Let's just put some pebbles in there. Yeah. That's delicious. I also love how there's a bit of a popping sensation in my mouth. It's kind of like Pop Rocks, although there's no Pop Rocks in here. It's just because, like... The pebbles themselves have, they're airy. They literally have holes in them. Uh, the implications of that are beyond me. Also, I think they're the most pale colored um, uh, cereal morsels. The most pale colored cereal morsels of the bunch. And uh, I think it provides a nice contrast in my opinion. Also, I can't tell. Can you tell whether the milk has changed colors yet? I think it probably has. Like, intuition would state that it definitely has changed colors by this point, or at least shifted in the way that it's reflecting and or absorbing them. But like, I, I can't tell. I am so, I'm so far removed from this from a mental standpoint, or even a physical standpoint, that I just can't tell. So I guess what we're gonna do now is we're gonna let this sit for a little while, a little while longer while I chat with whatever's going on. Yo, what is this? This looks like cereal. Well, Dom, Domstar, dear Domstar, you, you would be right. You, just like the Disney Quan that came before you, are clairvoyant. You have predicted the future. You have accurately identified what lies in front of you on the screen that you are watching on. It is cereal. This is essentially cereal. <laughs> A bit like it. It kind of is. Yo, Marshall Gray, Marshall Gray, how are you? Marshall Gray on a day like today. Why don't you sway? I tried to do rhymes there. Welcome to the party. I don't know what's going on, but I love it. I know a lot about what's going on. And if you'd like some more information, we're actually making cereal. It's a very colorful cereal. And then we're going to throw some booze into it. I hope the title accurately reflects that. And if it doesn't, that's fine. Is that Lucky Charms? It's not Lucky Charms. Here, let's go through what we've gotten through so far. Step number one, pour an indeterminate amount of... What is going on here? Nanactus, Ninactus? Ninactus, I love that. My man, let's go, let's do this. Let's do this, more party hats on my head. I like that. There's only so much real estate that goes on at this head. I have a very, I have a very small head. Or at least I like to tell myself that. Um, that's not a comment on my brain. My brain is very, very large and super duper wrinkly, um, if, if, I, if I may be so proud of that. Uh, but yes, there's an indeterminate amount of milk in here. We have different types of cereal that are currently infusing in there. Uh, cereal type number one was um, this guy, the, the dude with the freaky toucan, it's Fruit Loops. Um, the other type that was in there is Tricks. Not the regular Tricks with the weird, awkward brown bits in there. It's all fruit all the time. Six fruity shapes to be exact, and a rabbit looking oddly expectantly at the bowl. Um, and it's kind of got a weird glow to it. It's, it's odd. Like, OG, not the OG. The OG itself. Oh, the OG cereals. And then Fruity Pebbles. We also have Fruity Pebbles in there. So far, we haven't done anything else. The spicy part. Spicy part? The booze? The booze could be spicy. We don't know. We'll get there. Hasn't occurred yet. But you came at the right time, because that's kind of where we're going next after a little bit of time. He's trying to make it rainbow-like. That's like, that's the intent. 
That'd be intense. Like, I don't have I don't have much pride stuff going on here. I got ice cream cones on my shirt that happen to be rainbow colored. And um this this milk certainly doesn't seem very prideful, but everything that's on top of it is. And uh yeah, we're just gonna kinda let that sit for a little bit longer uh while I remember what it is that I have to do with literally everything else. But Cam, tricks are for kids! Are you not a child at heart like I am? Because if you're not, I pity you. Just kidding, I grow more and more removed from my childhood every single day. That's what this guy's for. I am a child, and you're entitled to that. Feel proud of that. Sad. Oh, well. Oh, what's next? I need to go into my book. Hold on. I, I wrote this all down. This is my little Markiplier book. I love that guy. I don't know when I got this thing, but I love it. Manchild. Hell yeah. Well, I wouldn't consider myself a manchild. I would consider myself a very young adult with manly features child, if I have to be specific there. The next thing that we need to do, I actually have this written down in the instructions because this is, this is very different from the normal flow here. Step one, pour milk. Okay. Step two, pour cereals. All right. Step three, let's sit. Infuse. Yeah, sounds good. Step four, strain out the solids. Step four, strain out the solids. That's what we need to do, strain out the solids. It was mine. What was yours, the cereals? I bought the M book when he has the charity thingy. Oh, was it yours? I most definitely asked your permission to use this before taking it. And if I didn't, I'm sorry, it's mine now and I have been using it. Let's remove the bourbon off the table for a little bit. We don't want to get ourselves too hopeful around here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop out all the solids from the cereal. And now that I think about it, I do not have a container to put this in. Um, so excuse me for a moment as I grab the garbage pail from the other side of the couch because I need an apparatus. Hi there, my name is Cameron and welcome to the show. This is my trash can. Don't kill anything. This is my trash can. Um, they do not have a name, nor do they really want a name. They prefer to be called trash can. It's it's their thing. We accept that around here. Oh, okay, so I'm just gonna out the salads. It's not because I don't like the cereal. I do, actually, you know what? I think I owe this cereal at least a taste. That's what that's what mixologists do, right? They 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 brave the trials ahead of them. Now tasting. Right, well, first we smell. I'm gonna agitate it a little bit. Oh, that is a can we hear that? Can we hear the gushingness of this? Here's, here's a little ASMR, please don't spill things. Oh my god, please don't spill things. This is... Oh my god. Oh, I think it's too low. Oh, well, we tried. We tried. I need an amplifier. I need an ASMR microphone that I can pull down from above like a boom operator. Oh man, that's a drag queen size glass. It makes their hands look more delicate. Indeed. It does. Are my hands dainty compared to this glass? It's a, it's not a large drink. It's just, I have very small hands. Anyway, I apologize for getting your hopes up about potential squishing ASMR. It doesn't really smell that much. It kind of smells like, it smells very heavily of the tricks. It's mostly tricks. It mostly smells like trick cereal. I don't think I really get anything else in there. What does it taste like? Oh my god. I get the Fruity Pebbles. I don't really get the Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops are kind of gone. It's definitely, it's definitely Fruity Pebbles. It's Fruity Pebbles and a little bit of Tricks. Before I was describing how the, the the taste, the aftertaste of Tricks is very sticky in a way. It really sticks around. That aftertaste is sticking around. So first it tastes like Fruity Pebbles. Then it tastes like Tricks cereal, the kind with all the different things in there and none of that brown shit. And then the Fruit Loops, I guess, is just hiding in the background, waiting to strike. Um, and it also, oh, duh, it also tastes like the milk. This is oatly. It has a distinct taste to it. It tastes like oat milk. It's just a, a can. Domster just can't. It's just a huge glass to begin with. Kind of is. It's just a very large glass. It's actually, here's an actual comparison of this compared to the size of my head. It is a very large glass. Um, but but let's not let's not make people feel uncomfortable about it. You know, some people are really secure with their size. Size doesn't matter. At least that's what they say. Um. Anyway, speaking of the size, that most definitely does not matter. I'm gonna strain out the solids. Uh, to strain out the solids, I am gonna kind of. I have a large enough glass, so I'm gonna <laughs> take a giant ass strainer and just kind of. I'm gonna go for it. This is how it's gonna be. This is how this is how we will do things. So let's try it. The idea is to only have the milk left behind. Essentially, this was an infusement process. We're infusing. 
So let's let's let that strain for a little bit. Disney Queen says, this is what happens when we go thrift shopping. I walk out with Disney stuff and Cameron buys large glasses. Hoi, hoi, hoi. I said that weird. This is the only large glass in my collection. So we can't just judge me on that. You're taking one situation and defining my entire personality. But to be honest, a large glass filled with a bunch of cereal that a man found at a thrift store on just a wheelie day out in the out in Philadelphia kind of feels like it describes my personality. Also, I'm wearing party hats. What's the reason? Don't worry about it. That feel like that describes my personality quite well, actually. <laughs> to those who know me and to those who don't, this is what represents me. Hi there. My name's Cameron. I'm welcome to the bar with an X. The X is silent. Anyway, this is a this is a. This is a trying process, I will admit that. That poor cereal, well, I mean, I don't think it's very poor. Maybe the cereal wanted to end up in the trash. Maybe that was just where it wanted to be. Who are we to judge the cereal around us? I'm trying my best this year. I, perhaps the better, perhaps the, there's another solution here. There must be a better solution to this. But what could it be? I have multiple containers around here. Maybe I, maybe I poured it into a container here. No, maybe I just kind of scoop it out. Maybe, oh, I got an idea. I have, I have an idea. We're gonna double tool it. I have a ladle and I have a sieve. So I'm gonna kinda, I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna spoon it in like that. Try to get out all the solids. Uh, if, I actually feel like I would be better off if I had a bigger bowl. I think this is gonna be the most time consuming part of the drink, the infusion, so to speak. I'm also trying not to spill. Oh, I spilled milk on my counter. Oopsie, <laughs> that's just how it has to be. Anyway, so how's how's everyone's Pride Month gone so far? Mine just started today. I believe everybody else's did as well, but depending on where you are in the world, you might've had a head start or it, I guess by this point, it definitely happened for everybody. So um, yeah, how's it going? <laughs> I hope it's going okay. I hope it's been a nice day so far or evening or wherever you are, or perhaps, perhaps the first day of Pride Month has ended for you. That's kind of how time works on this earth. Um, or perhaps, if you're on another planet entirely, Pride Month was literally a second for you. And if that is the case, what planet are you on? Uh, why haven't you called my cell phone yet? And we should talk. And, and we sh I should introduce you to my government, who I think would be very, very, very unhealthily interested to talk to you about um, you and what you do and the, the physiology of your existence and your culture and... Ways to exploit it, probably. Haha, <laughs> America. Or at least what I've learned in American media. Sims just says, After sitting after sitting in milk for two minutes, can Fruity Pebbles be considered solids anymore? Uh, no. Not at all. I don't think any of this is considered really a solid. They're like, if I had to put a name to it, I'd call them quasi-solids. They are soaked. Come to think of it, they're almost sponge-like. I bet if I squeezed these, if I squeezed the ichor out of this, um... Maybe you'd be considered a spongy substance. I don't really know. I can't call your cell phone because I ain't got your number yet. This is a fair point. Well, um, alien, uh, alien from another universe or whatever, who also may have experienced Pride Month in literally a single second because time is wonky like that. Um, you can contact me on Twitter. I have a Discord. Um, you can uh, you can also like you can speak and chat if you want to. I understand that if you're an alien from another planet, you'd probably want to be lurking right now, and that's okay. That's totally okay. You don't need to say anything. Instead, what you can do is project your telepathic waves because obviously you have telepathy. I've seen it in the movies. <laughs> the media wouldn't lie to me, <laughs> would they? No, of course not. I choose to believe everything I read on the internet and the TVs. Disney Queen says, adult cereal, cereal stuff, I guess. Maybe, very well could be, I don't know. Cereal, cereal pathic. You can speak through cereal, maybe, I don't know. All right, so I've poured out most of the solids and I just realized that I can probably strain everything out afterwards too. Um, so I think I'm done with that. I'm done attempting to pull that off. I am going to throw these very, very milky tools onto the surface that lies below and then tap, uh, top off the trash can because I don't really feel like looking at or experiencing that any longer. Oh, also Cameron has gone crazy about aliens. I've gone crazy about aliens. Aliens are eventually gonna go crazy for me because like, oh my God, how could you not? Obviously, I need to clean up my bar a little bit. It's very milky up here. Not an adjective that I usually would think of. Oh, look at that. Pride Month Hypu. Pride Month Hypu. I like Hypu. 
I have party horns for this very occasion. They're both the same, but different colors. It adds to the pride of it all. I love doing that. The aliens from the movie, Alien, can't even speak English. No, they can't. They just speak in... Actually, I get, I've never actually seen Alien. I don't know if they actually make sounds or anything like that. Um, any case, let's get ourselves back on track over here. We're making a cocktail. I think I've lost most of my milk, to be honest. How much milk is in this? I don't know. Um, but I'm too afraid to find out, so we're gonna use the same proportions as before. Openly acknowledging that maybe we want a little less bourbon in there because we've kind of reduced the volume by decent. The next ingredient, what's step number five? Step number five is mix in the bourbon and the vanilla extract and the ice. All right, vanilla extract and whatnot. Party time, I love the way those things look. Yo, speaking of which, thank you all. I was finally able to add more emotes. Now we have two animated emotes, which is, by the way, one of the most excitable things that has occurred to me this, uh, that last month, that was last month so far, it was great. As soon as Twitch said that they were giving animated emotes out to affiliates, I was like, yes, I can finally have the party parrot. And then I made a bunch of party parrots, par whoa, party parrots. So <laughs> I do a little graphic design on the side, not tune my own horn, but I think those part that popcorn parrot looks pretty good um the next thing i need is the bourbon uh the bourbon that i need is uh one and a half cups of it and because i know that we've lost some volume i'm gonna you put one and a quarter cup in there maybe even just a full cup i don't know put the shaker off of the side we don't need it yet take your measuring majigger which has now become a measuring cup the cereal soaks a lot of milk up it do though i love all these emotes i gotta get that thing what's that thing where like when you throw emotes in chat it like throws them all over the screen I gotta get me one of those. Eventually I'll figure it out. I'm young, I'm spry, and I'm learning. And because I'm young, spry, and learning, and my brain is probably still developing, I'm gonna reward it with alcohol. This is bourbon. I don't know what type of bourbon. This is a part of my experiment that I learned from the internet called the Endless Bourbon Bottle. The Endless Bourbon Bottle functions like this. You fill it up with bourbon, or whiskey, or really whatever you have. Try to keep it to a bourbon, whiskey, grain-related spirit, but you don't have to. You make the rules, and every single time you take from the Endless Bourbon, Bourbon, you have to add back to the endless bourbon and because I'm pouring out about a cup and a quarter of bourbon from the endless bourbon container I need to make a run to the liquor store excuse me to refill my endless bottle of bourbon I'm more than positive I have more than a cup and a quarter in here so let's try that all right um, so it's four parts infused milk and it's one part bourbon um, and in my particular ratios, because I'm working off of a six cup recipe, that's about one and a half cups or, or wait, I have conversions, one and a half cups or 12 ounces or 355 milliliters. What's going on over there? Burn hail, 1406. I see that over there. I've been around so much now. I've seen it multiple times now. The popcorn parrot. I don't think I've ever had the popcorn parrot on there. That's new. That might've been from last week, but you know what? If we all collectively hallucinated the popcorn parrot, I'm cool with it. I hallucinated it once upon a time, although that was during its birth. I am a parrot god. I'm um, just kidding. Oh, actually, well, hypothetically speaking, you get these from the cult of the party parrot, and if the cult of the party parrot is the one that worships the parrot, no, I can't be a god in this case. That makes no sense. I meant the bourbon bottle. Oh, the bourbon bottle! Yeah, that's made an appearance on this show before. It has indeed. To be honest, I don't know what kind. I don't know what it is in it. I really don't. Oh, random question. Hey, Cameron. Domstar asks, what do you consider the most boring hobby? I think the most boring hobby is not having a hobby at all. Without stimulation, what are we doing? Unless your hobby is introspective uh, philosophy, in which case I would consider that a, a hobby. If you're literally not doing anything at all, that is the most boring hobby. But some people are into that. But in my opinion, I can't seem to sit down for five minutes. There's something going on. It just happens over here. Oh my god, the Sims Chef, that's so cute. There's two popcorn emojis there. Emotes, that's what I said. I think procrastinating is a valid hobby. Probably. Staring at paint is boring? Nah, sometimes it changes colors. Bourbon, pour it in. Delicious. It's actually kind of milky because there was a little bit of milky at the bottom of that. Wow, this milk smells rancid. Wait, this isn't milk. It's alcohol. And I had a very small dinner today, so we'll see how this turns out. I don't plan on drinking this whole thing. I am a very small person. I, if I can toot my own horn, can very well hold my liquor, but certain certain things have to be done first before I can hold it, like eating a lot of food, which I technically have not done so today. So we're only getting a little bit of that. 
The next ingredient we need is vanilla extract. The vanilla extract that we're gonna add to this is usually two dashes per part. We have four part, or I guess I'm not saying that right. Two dashes per ratio. And if we have a four part to a one part for two dashes, then what we need to add as well is we need to multiply that by that is six so i need 12 dashes now i my vanilla extract down here does not come in a dashable form i don't exactly know how much a dash is going to be there um so i have as an analog some angostura bitters to help me measure out how many ounces a dash or 12 actually is so for that i'm going to take my measuring the jigger and i'm going to try and put 12 dashes into it and we'll just kind of see how far that gets up and um, then we're gonna measure the same exact thing out in the vanilla extract. It's basically the scientific method, but let's not do it over top of the giant cereal, alcoholic cereal bowl. Let's try not. Hey Cameron, Disney Queen asks, have you ever worked over the weekend to meet a deadline? Yes, I have definitely come into the office on the weekend to have meetings with and meetings with my boss and to talk about work-related stuff. It was early on in my job now. I haven't done it any time recently, although the expectation is that I'll do it again, but uh, I'm a rather efficient worker during the week just so that I don't have to come in on the weekends. And technically, I always work over the weekends because I work with a team in Vietnam, so technically speaking, from their perspective, I sometimes work on the weekend and when we message back and forth during whatever time of the week it's technically working on a weekend um so yes but not necessarily to meet a deadline unless you mean the deadlines that i face every single week 12 dashes or at least we're trying to one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and maybe a little bit extra that doesn't look like a lot um i am estimating I put it into the wrong side. I definitely should have put it in the other one. Wait, I have a solution for this. Let me grab an extra glass. Eee! Extra glass. I'm going to pour it into this glass and then put it to the other side for an estimation. This looks like 12 dashes looks to be just about a quarter of an ounce or about seven and a half milliliters. I don't actually need orange bitters. Uh, I'm going to toss that. I don't, I don't need that. And, um, well, this is a class that I have to clean a little bit later. Thank you, Angostura, for making a cameo appearance on this show today. We appreciate you very much. House Angostura is very widely renowned in this establishment. I'm going to clean off my measuring majigger so I can get a proper quarter ounce of the proper ingredient, which is vanilla extract. Just kind of pour that in. So, 12 dashes in this case, or two dashes to your four part of infused milk and one part of bourbon. Uh, did I say a quarter? I, I said the measurement already. I'm losing myself over here. Um, we don't need, it's not technically a lot. Vanilla extract is very, very vanilla-y, very, very potent, and a little bit alcoholic or so, I'm told. So that's about 12 dashes in there, just about quarter of an ounce or about seven milliliters. I think I'm doing the conversion there. If not, I apologize. I have to memorize the conversions because I was raised with the American system of conversion, but I did do all my math in milliliters and stuff, but I never knew the conversions. All right. So now you may be thinking to yourself, what a wonderful world. And after that thought, you may be thinking as well, do we have to shake this thing? Yes, yes we do. So to help me with that goal, I have a shaker, which is a very prideful shaker. I have another shaker, which is a not so prideful shaker. Another shaker, which is the not so prideful shaker's brother-in-law who happens to look a lot like him. And we also have the big shaker who for some reason I have over here, but I can do really cool things with this shaker. This one's my favorite, watch this. Oh, that was so cool. Everybody say that was cool. Nice. Nice. That was so cool. Oh my gosh. And so essentially the idea is I'm going to try to pour as much of this into each of these things as possible. I don't know how many shakers I'm going to need. So we'll just kind of see. And then we'll strain things out as normal to put it back in there. And then we'll garnish things properly. Maybe add a little bit of ice, some flair to it. And uh, that's just how it's going to be. And the way that I'm going to do this is, you guessed it, my ladle buddy is coming back. So let's put the ladle in there. Uh, actually, let me stir things around just a little bit just to get, just to make sure that everything gets to know each other a little bit. Vanilla extract. I wouldn't want that sitting on top. Nor do I really want the bourbon existing on its own without the milk. That could be very, very interesting. LOL, it gave birth. Like, dude, it was actually really cool. 10 out of 10. Want to see it again? I'll do it again in a moment, but I have to... Uh, there's some business we have to take care of first, and that is the sound this glass makes when you hit it. That's pretty cool. I wonder if I got a shit ton of these giant margarita glasses and I could play a song with them. When the moon hits your eye Like a big margarita glass That's amore And 
now I need the ladle back, actually. I don't know why I put it away. Let's do pride glass first. Oh, you know what? I should probably put ice in it. I gotta put ice in it first. Otherwise, I'm not gonna measure things out correctly. I'm gonna put that ladle there. Stay stay right there, ladle. By the way, my sincerest apology... <laughs> I don't need to apologize. I'm gonna do any, going to anyway. I have a very small bar here. I have very large apparatuses. We're, we're, we're working on that. <laughs> I need to... If y'all have a suggestion of where I can get a really, really nice bar for cheap, maybe Ikea, <laughs> let me know in the comments down below. <laughs> You don't have to. You can just you can just say it here. You can DM me later. It's, it doesn't really matter. Or you can say nothing at all. I'll eventually find it. I need ice. Let's get ice. I got a big old cube of ice. Big old cube of ice in the pride container. Nice. Love that. Couple of small cubes of ice also in the pride container. Here we go. Amazon. Clink, clink, clink. The rainforest. I mean, that's that's an idea too. And somehow things that... It seems that the most obvious thoughts are the thoughts that evade me the most easily. Oddly enough. All right. Shaker number one. We're gonna pour stuff into it. We're not gonna worry too much about the cereal bits because they will be strained out in the end. Oh my god, I may need more shakers. Holy... No, stop. Stop making a mess! Oh my god. Would you stop being so milky all over the table? Jeez. You'd think you were raised this way or something. Because it's milk. It was, it was born this way. Milk was born this way! Oh my god. I find this oddly satisfying. I find this oddly annoying. <laughs> I never have to do multiple scoops and multiple shakers, but technically if I were ever a real bartender, the whole multiple shaker thing would be not so foreign to me. So if I was a professional, this wouldn't be phasing me at all, but I'm not a professional. I have a full-time job doing firmware work and I don't plan on a career change just yet. All right, shaker number two, not as pretty as the first one, but equally valid. Oh, proper introduction's not necessary. Proper introduction is here and they get a party hat. I'm gonna go one of the sparkly ones this time. Welcome, proper introduction. If you'd like to, you may give yourself a proper introduction because I don't know if I will be able to do it any sort of justice. I know nothing about you, effectively, aside from your wonderful name. Welcome. I have to put ice in the shaker. Oh, this party head feels like it's going to fall off my head. I'm doing a little bit of rearranging. You're changing, you're rearranging. You're doing stuff that people have never seen before. Not really. If this is the first time that you're seeing alcohol and cereal, that's probably a good thing, I think. If all, all things considered, I would think. All right, let's fill up this shaker. Unfortunately, it's not as, it's not as transparent as the other one, so it doesn't look that cool, but we're trying. We're trying around here. I think I can get two things in there. What is alcohol? I don't know. I don't know what alcohol is. It's definitely not, it's definitely not a certain type of chemical that alters the function of your brain, or at least the brain of humans and many other animals such as mammals like ourselves. It's probably not that. I think, you know, when you really put your mind to it, alcohol is probably love. Alcohol is love. Alcohol is life. And as we know, love is love, which means life is alcohol, which means life is life, which means alcohol is alcohol. So in the spirit of Pride Month, remember kiddos, love is love, alcohol is alcohol, and life is life. And I think those are important lessons to distill into tomorrow's youth. Don't hurt me. No, baby, don't hurt me. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. I think I might need another shaker. Oh, God. This is, this is insane. I don't have enough shakers. I am literally, I was literally a day away from giving away two of my smallest shakers to somebody who needs it more than I do. <laughs> and I'm so glad I have one extra day to use them. Otherwise, actually, you know what I could? Mm, I don't want to use the glass. I have plastic cups. I have a stir. I have a stirring glass. I can use the stirring jar. I can do that. Now the big one, the favorite one. Here, I'm gonna do that thing again. <laughs> Watch this. Woo! That's so cool. And it made a clinking sound this time. I am constantly, constantly surprising and impressing myself, which I guess makes for a, a pretty bad reward system because it's getting activated all the time. But you know, at least. At least I'm not doing it via external stimulation. Although stimulation, that's important to have. Excuse me, I'm adding ice cubes. The whole process, I feel not the need to narrate anymore because I've done basically the same thing four times over. I've, this is the first time I've done a big recipe on this show and it seems like it's hitting pretty well. So, <laughs> and by the way, by the way, in case you missed the recipe stuff, I should say it at least one more time during the stream. There's a vibe that comes out after this, it's on there. I have an Instagram where it comes out, we post photos and stuff like that. Don't worry, it's all in there. If you thought you missed it here, you were wrong. We prepare for that. 
my in my opinion the whole reason i do stuff like this is because when i'm going around the internet and i see a really awesome cocktail recipe i'm like yo i want to know what's in that this seems like super duper cool and oftentimes i don't get to know what's in it because people don't post their recipes and i'm like what the heck dude that's not the point like your cocktail may look very very pretty but like if i don't have the means to reproduce it because i have no idea what's going on then it makes me a little sad and i feel a little not in on that and i want to be in on that and everybody should be in on that i actually don't have i need more containers oh my goodness all right okay all right all right cool yo what's going on absolute absolutely a toe a a toeable a toeable i like that hi hello hi how are you I'm gonna, wow, I made a mess all over the trash can. That's unfortunate, that's fine. Oh, and I have, oh, I have bits of Fruity Pebble on my table. Mmm, delicious. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try to pour the rest of this into a stirring glass. It's okay, I have these on standby. You never know when you might need them. The trash shall drink. The trash will consume! Consume the, the liquid of the fallen, I guess? Oh, so maybe, I don't know how I feel about that. One big ice cube looks pretty cool. By the way, I usually do close-ups too, but as you can probably tell, there's a lot going on here. And well, consumption. Oh, I'm gonna consume one of these things. There's so many different consumptibles to choose from. Let's try, oh yo, let's go with the cereal bowl. This seems nice. Oh, I forgot that had bourbon in it already. Wow, that is a very interesting combo. I don't taste a lot of the, the vanilla extract is actually a little, I can, I can taste that in there. It's got a, it's almost a spice to it, but that's probably the bourbon. Maybe I'm the one playing myself. Interesting. Anyway, I'm gonna try to see how much I can get into this stirring glass as best as I can without spilling things all over the place. I think this will do it. I think this will be the last mixing apparatus that I will have to use for this cocktail. I think I'm gonna do the big one now. I'm gonna do the big pour. Here comes the big pour. Big pour, here we go. Big pour, here we go. Big pour, here we go. All right, cool. That's that's excellent. But there's a bunch of gunk in there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of... I'm going to clean this somehow. How am I going to clean this? Um, I don't have paper towels, but I do have regular towel. So here, I'm going to pour any excess in there. Don't need that. I'm going to try to take out some more solids by using a towel. We try to remain clean around here. It doesn't always work. Let's see. And then... Yeah, and then we'll, we'll take care of things from there. Also, the outside of this glass is disgusting, so I think it deserves a little bit of a clean right now. I'm going to... Excuse me, everybody. Y'all have to remember to clean up after yourself. Who do, you, who do you think cleans up after you after you're done at the bar? <laughs> the bartender or or somebody who was paid to do it who happened to be in the bar at the time. Um, I would think, like, if I was at a bar and the bartender offered to pay me to clean the bar, I would probably clean the bar. Like, why wouldn't I? It's money. The sadly, the sadly, the sadly, the sadly cleans the bar. Oh, well, that seems a little disappointing. Hopefully they're paid for it at least. You know, this is kind of this is kind of nasty. I kind of wish that I uh, had a better way to clean this, but you know what? That's fine. Mm. That's kind of nasty. That's kind of nasty. But it's it's okay. It's okay. I won't be drinking. Well, I will kind of be drinking out of this. Eh, is how it be. It just it just be it just done to do how it happened to be. Hello, absolutely towable. Welcome to the party. I have a party hat for you. I'm running out of space on my head. I'm gonna use a tiny party hat. It's yellow. <laughs> I don't have many, wait a minute, I just remembered, I have, hmm, there is a rainbow party head in this collection somewhere, oh no, 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 maybe there isn't, is there one? Well, I thought there was a rainbow party head in here, I don't know where it is, oh well, I'll have to, maybe it's, I lose track of, th there's a lot of, sh there's a lot of shit in my apartment, I lose track of things very, very easily, the unicorn horns are rainbow, they are, but they're out of reach, and oh my god, I just, I just can't. I literally can unless I jump over there. Well, actually, I can just move the trash can out of the way. Awkwardly break the fourth wall for a moment. Hi, everybody. Sorry, camera. There we go. There's a, there's a... I don't know why I didn't have anything, one of these in my party hat box. Why aren't there any in my party box? Questions that even baffle me. That's the next one. But we've got to earn it. Anyway, so I'm gonna put this on the ground and it's time for Shake Fest. I'm gonna shake literally all of this. Actually, no, I should keep, no. I'm gonna put this back over here. We're gonna keep this over here. I'm gonna keep that over there. And I'm gonna stir this one because I think that's the least entertaining. The one that gets stirred. Stirred and strained, naturally. 
Dom says, my ADHD causes me to lose shit all the time. Well, <laughs> I haven't been diagnosed with ADHD, mostly because I haven't gone to a doctor to get that confirmed or not, but I lose shit literally all the time. And then I find it in the oddest of locations. So for first part number one, I'm stirring it. I, I just, I run out of shakers. That's, that's, that's why. I'm doing, I'm doing a, I'm doing a stirry because I've run out of the shakies. And if you run out of the shakies, you gotta do the stirries. Or you can like, I don't know. I'm sure there are other methods. Wow, that is awesome tasting. That is really cool so far. But I shan't describe it yet because we're not there yet. I'm gonna strain that into my, into my thing. I'm doing two-handed because I just can. Don't judge me. All right. Part number one, taken care of. Now we gotta get the rest of it. Because originally I wasn't able to find a big version of this recipe, so I kind of had to make it on my own, which means you gotta you gotta break the borders a little bit. Part number two, shaking in my favorite shaker. Woo! Being a little difficult on this one. I like this one. Supposedly the milk is supposed to get a little frothy. However, I don't know if, from what I've seen so far, it doesn't look like that applies to the oat milk. So I don't think we're gonna get as much froth as if you use whole milk on this or like, I guess maybe soy milk or almond milk. I don't exactly know. But part number two, prideful milk punch. That's what I'm calling this, prideful punch. I like that, we don't need the milk in there. Keep it the alliteration. I love that. All right, part number three is upon us. Here we go. Oh, there's a little bit left over. There we go. Cool. Epic. I'm gonna put all this stuff on the ground and clean it later. I don't have a very good workflow around here. Things get cleaned eventually. Hopefully by tomorrow, maybe tonight. I don't know. Depends on how awake I am. Uh, part number three, being shaken in one of the tiny, less colorful containers, but still a valid container nonetheless. It actually mirrors our innermost uh, goodnesses and badnesses. And, and, and other wisenesses, I suppose. Um, strain it, this one's got an internal strainer on it. I don't even have to do anything extra. There it goes. You know, they say if you pour it from higher, it tastes better and I'm making a mess. So let's actually not do that. Wow, silly cannon. Sims Jeff says, prideful pasteurized punch. I don't know, is it no pasteurized? Well, now this is a real question of mine. Does this say pasteurized? Would it say pasteurized? Holy, where are you? No dairy, no nuts, no gluten, no shit. Ha! <laughs> that, that was, I put that in there. There's nothing that says about anything about pasteurization on here. I don't believe. Uh, oat base. Um, and that's it. It's, it, oh, oat base, water oats, 2% or less of low erucic acid, rapeseed oil, dipotassium phosphate, calcium carbonate, tricalcium phosphate, sea salt, dicalcium phosphate, riboflavin, vitamin A, vitamin D2, and vitamin B12. <laughs> I don't see anything mentioned about pasteurization, so I suppose we don't have to be worried if we were even what Ow! I just remembered I had another shaker. I just found it on the ground. And it's the coolest one of all. It's a plaid shaker. Me and my forgetful habits. There goes my, there goes my forgetful. <laughs> there I go, being forgetful again. <laughs> what was I talking about? Anyway, shaker number four. I'm gonna do my left hand on this. It's my non-dominant hand. It makes things a little bit difficult. Why are you leaking? Stop leaking. Don't do that. Don't leak. Why you gotta leak on live camera? I don't like you. I don't like these shakers. That's why I'm giving them away. I don't like these shakers. Stop making a mess. I gotta make a mess like that. Oh my god, absolutely. Oof. This is a thing that's happening. I love this. You know, actually, before this stream started, I thought, oh my god, this is the perfect idea. It's gonna, this is gonna be perfect. Now I'm like, this is a lot of alcoholic milk. I'm not drinking all of it, but I'm gonna drink some of it. Anyway, next, shaker number five. That's a lot of shakage. Did I need to shake all of it? No. Did I want to? Yes. That was, what an interesting combination of motions. It was actually very difficult to shake that back and forth and also put my head up and down. Interesting. Weird how the body works like that. I got that from, this from Joe's Crab Shack, apparently. Thanks, Joe's Crab Shack. That's coming out very smoothly. Nope, just kidding, very bubbly. Nice. Oh my goodness. This looks like somebody put slightly, it looks like somebody literally just poured oat milk into a giant margarita glass. As I, technically, it doesn't even feel like a margarita glass because it has, doesn't have that cool bulbing feature on it. But it's not a martini glass because it's not very sharp looking, but it's not a wine glass because it's not tall enough. 
I don't, know what, I don't know what the heck this thing is, but I think it's closest to a margarita glass, so I'm just gonna call it how I see it. Oh, this is a lot of dishes to wash later! Yes! And I so look forward to being able to do so while watching television. What am I watching right now? I'm watching Infinity Train right now. I just finished the first season. It wasn't that difficult to get through, and I like it so far. It's a very pleasant show. I like that. There's actually, this is actually really cool too. There's bits of fruity pebbles floating in this, and if I could... I'm still working on different camera angles around here. I'll put pictures of this on Instagram for better views like that, but oh, I'm gonna try to put it up to the camera too to try to see if we can get like a, a better view of that. Oh, I didn't add the garnish yet. I gotta add the garnish. The garnish is just more cereal, spoiler alert. Let's see, can we get a good view of this? Can we? No, that is not happening. Not unless I wanna pour milk literally all over my floor. This table is also wobbly. Have I described how wobbly this table is? This is a very wobbly table. <laughs> this could all go to shit right now. In any case, now we need to add the garnish. So actually what we've added, let's, let's go back to the beginning, shall we? What you add to create your prideful punch is to, uh, your prideful milk punch or pri prideful pasteurized, prideful pasteurized punch, whatever we want to call it, is bourbon, uh, milk, cereal, and a little bit of vanilla extract. If you're doing this for just yourself, you're gonna put in four parts of infused milk. And by that, I mean, you take milk, you add cereal to it, whatever cereal you want, and then uh, filter out the cereal, uh, then you're gonna add it to one part of bourbon, whatever bourbon you like. I've got mystery bourbon here, and then add two dashes of vanilla, vanilla extract. If you are building for six ounces total, you're gonna have four and a half, uh, six cups total, excuse me, not ounces. You're gonna need four and a half cups or 36 ounces or 1.06 liters of milk. However you got it, however you got there, infused or otherwise, you'll need 12 dashes or just about a quarter of an ounce or about seven milliliters of vanilla extract. And then you'll also need 1.5 cups or 12 ounces or 355 milliliters of bourbon. Whew. We made it. The next thing we need to do is garnish it. And I, can, I cannot think of anything better to garnish this with than some cereal. So we're gonna add a little bit of terrifying bunny product. A little bit of terrified bunny product. Oh, don't, don't move the table, Cameron. You'll drop things. Um, terrifying toucan product with holes. And then we're also gonna add um, actual sugar rocks. It's fruity pebbles, actual sugar rocks, but only a little, cause that stuff, that stuff is palatable. That's potent, it's potent, it gets all over the place. And naturally, if you're trying to share this drink with friends of yours, you're gonna need a couple of things to make sure that everyone can tip the glass at once, so to speak. So if you have straws, which I do, I think, you can add them to your drink. I have four straws in my drawer, so that's what we're gonna use. We'll add a straw over here, we'll add a straw over there, and we'll add a straw over here. I, because I want it, I'm gonna take the most colorful straw of them all, because I think by this point, Dare I say, I think I've earned it. This is Prideful Punch. Prideful milk, it's got milk in it. Prideful Punch, it smells like cereal. Like I mentioned before, it mostly smells like trick cereal. That has a very potent smell to it, but there's a little bit something extra in there. Might be the bourbon, might be the milk, could be my soul, I'm not sure. A piece of me goes into everything that I make. Uh, it's like a professional chef, I guess. How does it taste though? That's not bad at all. Interesting. So, I know what oat milk tastes like, and it's got an interesting texture to it. It tastes pretty good. I don't know how else to describe it aside from it tastes like oat milk, doesn't taste like regular milk, it doesn't have that same je ne sais quoi to it, I suppose, but it tastes like oat milk. Take that oat milk, that I'm sure the flavor is coming to your head right now, a little bit of twang to it. That twang could be coming from the bourbon. I got a little bit spice there. I'm pretty sure that's coming from whatever's in that mystery bourbon of mine. I don't know what's in it again. What does Anna think? Anna's actually at the library studying right now, so she'll have to she'll have to try some of this later when she gets back. Um, it also tastes like Oh. I got a piece of fruity pebble in there, excuse me. It also tastes like so that's the thing. That spice, I don't know whether it's coming from the bourbon per se or it might be coming for the vanilla extract. There is quite a bit of vanilla extract in here, which kind of rounds things out. It's interestingly enough, the vanilla extract actually tastes the oat milk tastes more like milk in a way. And I don't exactly know how to describe that, but like, in my opinion, milk straight out of the carton, like milk, like cow milk, kind of tastes like cream. I mean, of course it's gonna taste like cream, but it tastes 
almost vanilla-y. Not like vanilla like you just bit into vanilla ice cream, but like, also, why are you biting into ice cream? I can't do that, my teeth are too sensitive. But it tastes more like milk than it did previously with just the oat milk in there. So there's a, there's a, sp there's a spice to it, almost cinnamony, but it's vanilla, definitely. There's also something else going on there, probably added by the bourbon. I'm, I don't have a very refined palate, so I don't exactly know what's going on. Um, there was also the fruitiness of what's in the milk, I'm gonna be honest, is kind of lost on me. Interestingly enough, despite how much, like, cereal we had floating in there before, the oat milk, I think, takes on its own flavor. If I did this with actual regular milk, whole milk, then I probably would have gotten more aspects of the cereal in there, which is why I'm not getting it from drinking out of the bowl. But naturally, am I growing a, am I growing a mustache? I'm trying not to. I actually pluck my ma mustache every couple of days. I don't like it. I don't like my mustache. But yeah, this lighting isn't really helping me. If I look up here, it looks like I may have a mustache, but if I go down here, the mustache has hopefully disappeared. Um, but you know, who drinks cereal from the bottom? You gotta drink the cereal from the top. And I'm not talking just my regular mixing spoon. I gotta use my ladle. But first I gotta take a picture of this because this is this is quite a this is an astounding feat in and of itself. And I am I'm very happy that we were able to experience this together. So obligatory Instagram photo. It literally it literally looks like a cereal bowl. <laughs> Dude, grow it out. I'm not gonna- You know what? It's weird. Coincidentally enough, you were the second person this week telling me to grow out my facial hair. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't like- I love- I love my baby face. I, I mean, it's not very much a baby face. It's actually pretty scruffy right now because I shaved this morning and I didn't shave before stream started, which I might make a habit of doing if it becomes that noticeable, but I like my baby face. I think I look cute and I'm gonna keep it that way. However, I don't want to get rid of the hair completely because for various cosplay- if listen, if I'm cosplaying a dude with a mustache, I'm gonna grow out a mustache, but so far that's not on the cosplay list. So I haven't done it just yet. Anyway, let's see what a spoonful tastes like. Just a spoonful of Prideful Punch makes everything okay. Mmm. Mmm. It's good. It tastes like cereal. It tastes like I'm eating cereal. It tastes like I'm eating Trix cereal. Most of the Trix. The Trix is potent. I don't really get... It's probably because I didn't put a lot of fruity pebbles in there, but the tricks is what comes off the most. I don't get a lot of the Fruit Loops, but it's, but it's good. It's good. It's good. I like it. I like this very much. It tastes like, tastes like cereal. It tastes like, imagine for a moment that you poured yourself breakfast in the morning and you spiked it with bourbon. That's kind of what this tastes like. And I add a little bit of vanilla extract, which I think also may have a little bit of alcohol in it. So two weeks their own. What I'm actually going to do now is I am not going to drink all of this for the rest of the, the, the stream tonight. I'm gonna pour a little bit of it into a single glass of mine. Uh, let me try to see if I can get more liquid in there. And that's what I will be enjoying on the other side of the bar, AKA my gaming desk, where we play a little bit of Hollow Knight, which is what comes up after this cocktail session here. That's pretty much where things are ending, folks. I appreciate you all for coming along very, very much. I hope y'all are having a happy Pride, and if not, that's okay. We've still got the entire month of June left to celebrate and do things that I suppose we would normally do. We should be able to normally do, but sometimes we're not able to. Oh, dude, go to think. Ooh, words. Dude, grow it out, says Domstar. I think I noticed it at the computer this time. Interesting. Yeah, it's not something I can get rid of. I have dark hair, so no matter how much you shave it, no matter how much you pluck it away, there's always little roots that are trying to come back and get you. And technically, it's because it's also because I have this bright ass light in front of me, and I could fix it with makeup, but ah, that's a lot of effort, so I'm not gonna bother with it. In any case, thank you all so much for joining me over at the bar for this perfectly prideful, possibly pasteurized punch concoction. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your evening, if it's the evening where you are. Perhaps it's the morning, the sun is shining where you are. In which case, what better way to start the day than with a nice milky breakfast that has been spiked, if you so choose to. Thank you all very much. If you're joining me on the other side, I will see you there very, very soon. If not, have a wonderful rest of whatever time it is for you. Happy Pride, everybody, and party on. Bye, everyone. Relieve me of my burden. Drop all the geo. Take out your talk, take off your hat and respect. Here we go. Oh, okay. I wasn't able to toss it on my geo. Oh. Oh no.
that wasn't all my idea. Wow, and I was so willing to do so. I was so willing to give it all up for this. 